What is up, everybody? It is your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, back with another video today. Today is gonna be a vocal effects video. Well, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do a vocal effect, and today I decided why not show you guys how to get that Travis Scott X type of sound to your vocals. Now, disclaimer, this is not exactly how Travis Scott or his engineers do his vocals. I don't know the exact chain they use. I'm just trying to get a similar sound. And also, if you want to sound like Travis Scott, guess what? You better go talk to your fairy godparents and freaking ask, can you become Travis Scott? Because you're not going to sound nothing like Travis Scott unless you are him or you have his voice. But this would give you a similar vocal effect sound that he used. Like I said, it's not the exact thing. So take it with a grain of salt but it is very close to it in my opinion i think it is and it does give a very nice sound so if it's not the exact sound it's still a very nice vocal effect anyway so i'm gonna let you i'm gonna play to you guys the effect and then i'm gonna you know talk to you how i did it also yes i'm using studio one because it is my recording daw of choice but you can do this in any daw from fl studio to cubase a lot to ableton to pro tools to whatever i'm gonna be using third-party plugins so, but basically there is equivalent, you can use the equivalent of your DAW to get the same effect. So if I'm using a compressor, use the compressor equivalent in your DAW. And if you want me to do a, a video of this in a certain DAW like FL Studio, just leave it in the comment below and I'll be happy to show you how to do it in FL Studio if it's been requested a lot with default plugins in FL Studio, if you guys put it. But right now we use third party plugins, so pretty much anybody can do this effect in any DAW. So let me play the effect and then let's get right to how I did it. So. Be warned, I was just freestyling having a good time feeling myself. So take it with a grain of salt. Let's go. Oh, we gotta change that buffer side because it's acting real crazy. Hold on one second. There we go. Boom. Play. Ooh, okay. Ah, okay. Okay. I, I ain't gonna waste no time, I ain't gonna waste no time They be hating on me talking all that shit, man they mad they be lying I ain't got no time be wasting me, they hating me, I ain't waste time, I ain't waste no time They be hating on me that cool, they know they lying, they hating on me I ain't never gonna waste no time, no time Going with no time right now, I ain't got time to waste. They be hating on me, that's cool right now, man. I don't care what they say. I'm just up on a mission to go get it, and if they got them a problem, don't worry about the shit right now, man, cause no doubt I'm gonna solve them. I ain't gonna waste no time, I ain't gonna waste no time. But there you go. You get the you get the idea of the sound right there. It's pretty cool. Very open, airy, kind of distorted with a little bit of alt tone, but still kind of clean in itself. And it has kind of a cool, like, um, I guess, chorus effect. But I forgot to add one effect in, but I would definitely add in there to show you what it can do. But anyway, that's the effect. Like I said, it's not perfect. It's basically my take on the effect. So, you know, hopefully you guys like it, but I'm going to show you how I did it. So, first off, remember, the first thing to this take is, remember, you have to record with the effect. Uh, I recorded with two effects. I recorded with auto tune and reverb, and I also recorded with my distortion on too. But you don't have to do that. Um, but you have to record your um, auto tune. I use the T Pain effect because it's the one I have. It's the third party one I have. I don't have a. I don't have auto tune the Arturus one or anything like that. And pictures only in FL Studio. So I use this one. This was another one I had. What I've been had it for a while. But it's basically like auto tune E effects. Basically, you can select your key and your scale and then you either pick it soft or hard, which I really like that affliction. You know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty, it's pretty affordable, but it's a dope plugin. So I use this, um, I set it to the key of the beat, which was C minor, uh, C sharp minor scale. And I just, you know, rock with that. And then I boom, you know, I sung with it and I had some reverb on as well. Um, my choice of reverb was the Valhalla reverb by DSP, um, plugin Valhalla DSP. Very dope reverb. Any reverb will work. Um, if you use a reverb, my suggestion, like I said, is to cut the lows. Why didn't it cut my lows? That's weird. I'm supposed to cut my lows. I usually cut my lows around 100 hertz and my highs around 2,000 kilohertz. And then I blend, I use a 50% mix. I didn't want it too strong because too strong, if like 100% sounds like this. I ain't gonna waste no time. I ain't gonna waste no time. 
Actually, that doesn't sound bad at all. But I use 50%. I still want you to be able to hear more of the ver- vo- vocals and not m- so much of the reverb. So definitely if you do a reverb, kind of blend it in to where it's not so strong. But any reverb work, you know, doesn't really matter. It's up to you really. But I choose that hollow reverb because it's just, it's, it sounds really good to me. So like I said, but I cut my lows around 200 hertz and I cut my highs around 2 kilohertz. And I use a 50% mix and then I use like a console hall mode. So pretty open. But the main thing is record with the auto tune. So set your buffer size really low and record with it. Make sure it's in the key of the beat. If it's not in the key of the beat, your auto tune is going to sound weird. Like say, let's just say I change this to F, let's say the G um, major, G sharp major. Let's see what it sounds like now. Just an example. I ain't going to waste no time. I ain't going to waste no time. That's completely wrong. That's just completely, uh, uh, just nasty. So yeah, make sure you set it to the key to beat. If you don't know the key to beat, experiment with it. Try a different one until you get that one that sounds the smoothest and the most natural sound. And then there you go. But it's always good, like I said, to record with it. You can do it afterwards, but I highly suggest recording with your auto tune. And I made a video on how to record auto tune as well. So definitely check that out on my channel. So if you want to learn how to do an auto tune effect. So yeah. So once I had my reverb, my auto tune, I also had a a pitch correction software, my wave tune. I picked this up like yesterday. Um, I love this. It's, it was on sale. So I picked it up. Um, it's basically like Melodyne. Um, I didn't use it because I thought it'd be a little too advanced for this video, but I will go into how to, you know, correct your vocals to get it sounding super, super smooth and unnoticeable if you guys want that. So if you guys want a video like that, uh, definitely let me know and I can walk you through how to use pitch, cor- pitch correction software such as New Tone, Melodyne, and Waves Tune because those are three I know. And they all pretty much work the same, but they're good. But anyway, besides the point, we'll just delete that out of here. So once you get the your auto tune effect and you get your um you get your your, your auto tune or whatever, and that shows your revert. Um, the next thing I did was use the EQ. Now my EQ is nothing special; it just cut some of the lows because I felt like it had too much low mid low frequency range. And I, lo- I listen to a lot of Travis Scott stuff. You don't really hear too much low content, um, too much low content frequencies in his vocals when he was singing or whatever, rapping, or whatever. Cause you know, that would kind of muddy up the auto tune and make the auto tune act a little funny. So by cutting those frequencies, you can get essentially a cleaner auto tune sound. You know, cause the auto tune doesn't have to worry about pitch correcting those lower notes. He's got to worry about the, the mid range and up and correct those. So it makes the auto tune effect work a little less harder. Um, you can put it before or after. I think if you put it before, it makes a difference in after. I ain't gonna waste no time. I ain't gonna waste no time. I really don't. But yes, yeah, so I just cut my lows, and that's pretty much all I did. I didn't do no boosting like that, but you definitely can boost and cut based off your performance. But I'm just showing you the effect, not so much as in how to, you know, do all these crazy mixing tricks. So once you have your auto tone, then your little reverb. Next, I noticed that a lot of his vocals are distorted. Like he has a lot, of, he has like a very like distorted sound, but not distorted to where it's noticeable. So I used the capitator because the capitator is my favorite distortion plugin. I'm using the EMI preset, and I'm using about drive about six. But the key to the distortion is bringing the mix down. Um, Cause you don't want it like, if I had to mix all the way up, it sounds like this. I ain't gonna waste no time, I ain't gonna waste. It just sounds completely distorted, you know? But having the mix turned down, it's got kind of that grittiness to it, that kind of edge, grittiness and punch, but it's still clean and still um, recognizable. You still understand what's going on with, with the artist's saying, so. I ain't gonna waste no time, I ain't gonna waste no time. You can see when I hit them high notes, you can hear that distortion come through. But then when I'm talking, I'm kind of in a normal voice. You don't hear that much distortion. That's what you want, because that's how some of his that's how his vocals kind of sound when he's singing and he's rapping. I noticed that like in certain parts, you can really hear that edge. But all the other time, it's nice and smooth, you know, because basically they they crank the distortion up, but they blend the mix back, so it's not so strong. But it only comes out when he really, you know, says certain notes or hits certain parts. So. That's one thing I would definitely do. Like I distorting your vocals is definitely cool. Using distortion on vocals is a great way to add punch and add um just uh push it forward in the mix and give it like give it more room in the mix and give it like its own space. Definitely try distorting your, your vocals, but just like I said, bring down the mix because you don't want it to be like distorting. Unless that's, that's the effect you're going for, then you know that's cool. Um next I use the Doppler effect, but um you don't have to use that. I use the Waze Doppler. It says another one I picked up. Like I said, they they had a huge sale. I kind of went kind of Ham on buying crap. I only bought a few plugins, so it don't really matter. But yeah, this is another one that's kind of cool. It's basically like a chorus effect, but it basically doubles the voice, basically doubles the vocals, and it offsets the timing. And then you can modulate the timing and detune it and do kind of depth and rate. Basically, like it's like a more in-depth chorus effect. But let's say you don't have this. Let's say you don't have this. 
we'll just turn it off. Um, say you don't have that and you just want to use like you use a regular course effect. So if I throw a course on here, throw like a default course to get prove my point, you put the course after everything. Um, that's something I learned. Um, shout out to Sicky Beats. He kind of showed me that. So I'm going to give a shout out to him because he taught me that little trick. Put the course after everything and it does make a huge difference. And what you want to do is you want to turn the depth all the way up and turn, have like a really slow rate of speed, maybe about 15 or 10, something like that. And it gives it that kind of crazy, weird type of Travis Scott sound. So if you listen to it now, if I play it. I ain't going to waste no time. I ain't going to waste no time. They be hating on me talking all that shit. Man, they better be not. I ain't got no time to be with me. Yeah, you know, I ain't with time. I ain't waste no time. They be hating on me that cool. They know they lying. They hating on me. I ain't never gonna waste no time. No time. No time. No time. I ain't gonna waste no time. No time. So that's another thing you can do. You can add a chorus effect. In my in my instance, I use dop. I should like that. It's kind of cool. But in my instance, I use the dop the doubler, and I activated that, and that just gave it like a little bit of little bit of slight chorus kind of panned out. Um, you can definitely center it. I think bring it to the middle. If you like, his vocals aren't really wide like that. So what you want to do is bring them into the middle. So you just double click, hit zero, and bring them kind of mono, and then you got that kind of cool double effect that's kind of chorusy. I ain't gonna waste no time, I ain't gonna waste no time. They be hating on me talking all that shit. Man, they better be not. I ain't got no time to be with me. Yeah, you know, I ain't with time, I ain't waste no time. And as you probably notice, I have them on send effects. You don't have to have them on send returns. I I did my my reverb and the, the double effect on a send because that allowed me to blend it in more or less if I wanted to. But you can definitely just throw it on the channel and you'll pretty much get a pretty similar effect. You just want to turn down your mix on your plugin or turn down the volume or have you turn down the effect where it be coarse or whatever. And it really doesn't matter. And that's pretty much it. Like, it's pretty simple. It's just, like I said, his vocals, like I said, they're, they're very clean but distorted with auto-tone and a little bit of, like, like coarsey effect to it. It kind of give it that kind of space and kind of weirdness and kind of shape and make, make, give it that kind of movement to his voice when he's rapping. But one thing, like I said, one the key thing about doing all this is doing it very subtly and not doing it extremely. Like I said, a little bit of compression, I mean, a little bit of distortion, a little bit of the uh, chorus or doubler effect, and a little bit of reverb is all you need, you know. But the main thing is make sure you record with your auto tune because if you don't, it, it'll sound like you know it. The auto tune act all crazy and be all and you don't you don't want that sound. You want to have a clean sound. So that's pretty much it. How I somewhat simulate the Travis Scott effect. You know, hopefully this helped you guys out and give you some guys some ideas on what you can do. Definitely remember you can you definitely gotta mix your vocal still. Like I said, this is not even mixed. I mean you gotta do your EQ compression and all that good mess, you know, to get your vocals clean first. And then you add this on top of that to get the effect. So do remember that, keep that in mind. I did no compression. I did no EQ because like I said, I'm just showing you how to get the effect, not how to mix vocals. But if you want me to do vocal mixing tutorials, I'd be happy to do vocal mixing tutorials. But basically that's in a nutshell how to get the Travis get, to get somewhat of a Travis Scott type of vocal effect. Um, I hope it helped you guys out and you guys learned something and you guys take these ideas. If you know, and like I said you can do this in any DAW. That's why I did it in this DAW with third party plugins. That way you can take these ideas and you know translate it into your DAW. But if you guys want me to make a FL Studio default plugin version of this, I will be happy to do that. No problem. Leave a comment, leave a like in the video, and let me know, and I'll get to that. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, it's your boy Slim, a.k.a. Mr. Different. Not motivated by the money, but the like, comment, subscribe, and views. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy it like always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.